Okay, so um, one way in which we can um, we can use fiscal policy um, is as part of um, what's become known as demand and management. Um, demand management, um, yeah, is um, yeah linked to yeah, the Keynesian school um, of economic thought. Um, and Keynesians believe that you know that the danger is yeah that economies can get stuck in recession. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, and the argument, the argument they get, they, they can say is, well, look, in a recession, suppose the economy is in a recession, then the problem is, you know, that in a recession, unemployment is high. And we know from the circular flow that when unemployment's high, yeah, then what that means, yeah, is that you know consumption tends to be low. Yeah, because consumption is low, that means that income for firms is low. And because income for firms is low, then unemployment stays high, and we get kind of trapped um, in this you know, in this kind of spiral, yeah, whereby high unemployment means low demand, low demand means no income for firms, no income for firms means they can't afford to hire anybody, and therefore unemployment stays high. And what Keynesian says, well, look, we can get stuck like this, and this is something that we'll move on to look at in a lot more detail next term. But we get stuck in that situation, you know, that the economy isn't going to sort itself out, and that therefore the government should do something. Now, in principle, you could use monetary policy, um, but but sometimes in you know like like in the um, you know the present situation, interest rates are basically zero um, in in the current you know, in the current climate. We know that during the you know the COVID nine crisis, yeah, you know, the nineteen crisis, the the government um, you know the, the bank, the central bank, rather, the Bank of England, cut interest rates from 0.75 to 0.25 and then to 0.1 percent. Well, there's not much further that it can go. Yeah. So what you might do yeah you know, is you might decide that what you're going to do yeah is you're going to yeah is that you're going to increase government spending or cut taxes. You could, you know, what you could do is you could budget for a deficit. Um, and what you could do, therefore, yeah, is, and what we mean by, and that is known as expansionary fiscal policy. It's sometimes also known as a fiscal stimulus. Um, the reverse, yeah, um, yeah. Um, if the economy was overheating, and certainly governments back in the back in the sixties, yeah, you know, tended to do this. Yeah, you, know, you could, yeah, you know, in yeah, you know, if the economy is overheating, yeah, you know, if the economy is growing far too quickly, yeah, you know, then you could budget for so budget for a deficit. Sorry, means that government spending is greater than tax. Yeah, you know, um, so you know, so therefore you're borrowing. Yeah, you know, um, and what you're doing is you're therefore pushing demand into the system. Yeah, so what you're doing is you're increasing government spending or you're decreasing taxes. Whereas if the economy is overheating, yeah, then what you can do is you know, budget for a surplus. Um, so you're going to increase tax and decrease government spending with the aim here of reducing aggregate demand. Well, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at uh, we're going to look at what happens in recessions. Yeah, um, because that's yeah that that's where fiscal policy has most traditionally been used. If you go back to the, you know, if you go back to the Great Depression, um, Roosevelt and the New Deal, that was a type of expansion of fiscal policy. Um, back to the financial crisis 2007-8, yeah, everybody engaged in expansion of fiscal policy. So expansionary, expansionary fiscal policy, you know, and basically means that what you're going to do is you're either going to increase government spending or you're going to decrease tax with the goal, yeah, of increasing aggregate demand. So... I mean, in yeah, kind of ADAS, it's all fairly obvious. You try and shift aggregate demand to the right, or stop it from yeah, you know, stop it from um, shifting to the left. Um, so, what we can yeah, so so then it's then it's probably a question of saying, well, yeah, it's it's, it's so so the the first thing that happens is that what, what we do is we break that spiral. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to create um, a positive multiplier effect. So in, so a minute ago you saw the bit where where we're trapped. Um, high unemployment means low consumption. Low consumption means low incomes. Low incomes means for firms. Low incomes for firms means um, yeah, uh, no jobs. Um, if we can break that spiral, yeah, then we can get a positive multiplier effect going. Suppose that yeah, suppose that we create an increase in government spending. The government decides what it's going to do is uh, build a new airport. Yeah, this is what the Japanese did. Yeah, what that does is that immediately creates jobs um, in construction and engineering because there are jobs. Then those people they go and spend money. Yeah, they go out. Yeah, and they you know, they go and drink. You know, they go and drink rice wine, or they go out for dinners. They buy beer. Yeah, they I don't know buy new cars. I mean, it doesn't really matter what they do because the point is that that then creates more jobs. Yeah, for other firms, they then go out and spend as well. 
yeah, um, doing other things, which creates more jobs and so on. So if we can get the economy going, yeah, we can have a more than proportional effect. And that's the idea behind expansion of fiscal policy. When we're thinking about what to do, you therefore want to get the biggest bang for your buck. If you're going to spend a billion dollars, pounds, whatever, yeah, then you want to spend it in the right place. Um, it turns out that infrastructure spending tends to be one of the most powerful things that you can do. Infrastructure spending is beneficial for two main reasons. Um, one, yeah, um, because it's quite labour intensive. By labour intensive, what I mean is that there are lots of jobs in construction. So if you spend a billion dollars, then you get a lot of jobs. Unemployment goes down, they can't spend their money. And obviously, secondly, um, it's good in the long run. It's, gonna, it's likely to increase the potential growth of the economy. It's likely to increase aggregate supply, yeah, because the potential increases. Um, with tax cuts, um, probably the thing not to do um, is to cut um, income tax. It tends not to have such a big effect. If you cut, yeah, because firstly, not everybody pays income tax. Yeah, the, the poorest members of society, they're not paying any income tax at all. So if you cut it, what you're tending to do, yeah, is you're tending to increase the incomes, yeah, of relatively, of relatively rich people. And the trouble with relatively rich people is that they have a low marginal propensity to consume. Yeah, as we were saying earlier, yeah, if you cut the tax of rich people, they're tending, they're probably going to save it, stick it into their pension, that type of stuff. Therefore, the more powerful effects... Yeah, VAT can work. Um, it turns out that, that the most powerful thing that you can do um, is to decrease what the Americans call payroll tax and what in the UK is the um, not very snappily named um, employers' national insurance contributions. When Dover Books pays me, yeah, let's suppose that Dover Books pays me £50,000 a year, in order to do that, they have to also pay the government £5,000, yeah, because um, employers' national insurance runs about, uh, it's about 11%, I think. But, um, but the point is that in order even to be allowed to pay me £50,000, they first have to pay the government £5,000. Yeah, so it turns out if you, if you do that, it saves jobs, it encourages firms to take people on, firms have more profits, that's one of the ones that has a big effect. But also a decrease in VAT, that can be quite powerful too. Yeah, um, yeah, because, again, that's helping low-income groups. Um, so, again, who tend to have a high propensity to consume. Yeah, so, therefore, that tends to have you know, a, a bigger effect. Not everybody thinks that um, expansionary fiscal policy is necessarily a great plan. Um, yeah, so there are, you know, there, there are downsides of doing this. Um, yeah, so, yeah so, so one of the worries about expansionary fiscal policy, obviously, is it leads to an increase in debt. And that comes with the problems that we identified earlier, like um, opportunity cost, um, crowding out, you know, um, damage to your credit rating, and all that type of stuff. You're making it harder to finance yourself um, in the longer term. Um, there are some worries that neoclassical economists argue that what you're doing is you're keeping alive companies you know, that should have been dead. Yeah, that we're keeping alive businesses that really it would have been better if they died, and then when the economy recovers, their resources could be used, you know, could be used elsewhere. Yeah. Um, and there are there are also worries that in the case of some 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 economies, you know, like um, like Spain, sorry, like Greece, oh, yeah, the Japan, that's the one. God. Um, but in the case of Japan, yeah, what you've also got is these idea of white elephant projects. Yeah, um, where the government, yeah, where the, you know, in other words, where basically you're spending a hell of a lot of money, but you're not really getting very much back. Um, so there is an airport in Japan where there are six flights a day or something. Um, it's also the case that Japan has something like the world's sixth largest road network. Yeah, but in terms of surface area, in terms of land area, it's like the world's 50 something biggest. Yeah, so in other words, it's, yeah, arguably it's, yeah, it's just a waste of resources. Yeah, so both of those are suggesting. Yeah, that it's you know that it's basically inefficient, and that therefore it would have been better if you allow businesses that aren't very good to die. Yeah, um, so that when the economy then does recover, then um, it recovers. Um, yeah, it recovers more quickly, and and that these resources can then be put towards successful businesses who will help the economy to grow.